G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Tuesday evening here in Australia and the market's still down a little bit but it's not down as far as it, uh, as much I should say, as far because it's down. It's not going down as much as what it has been. Now I still think there could be some more downside to be, uh, to come before we start to bounce up but look, I, I do think that we're getting pretty close to the bottom if we haven't already found it. Again, that's never financial advice, that's just my personal opinion, but I definitely do think we could go a little bit lower. Like market cap wise, I think we're probably gonna stay above the $2 trillion mark, and if we do go under $2 trillion, I don't think we'll go too far under it. But again, that's personal opinion, that's not financial advice. I don't have a crystal ball, that's me taking you know a bit of a guess. What I like to consider an educated guess, so. All right. BTC dominance, 38%, ETH dominance, 18%, and gas prices way down. So back to the low prices we saw. But I just get the feeling like things are going to start to heat up pretty quickly. Could we see some more, you know, again, some more downside to maybe the end of the month? Yep, I definitely think we could. There'll be some volatility in there. You know, we'll probably scoot back up to nearly 50,000 and then come back down. And I really think sort of 38 sort of thousand is probably going to be the bottom and I think we might wick down there I don't think we'll get any candle closes down there but again I could be wrong but what might happen is you know Ethereum gets on another big run at the moment and we'll have a look at a story what makes me think again Ethereum might lead the way but again it's all just you know it's all a guessing game at the moment none of us really know exactly what's going to happen but let's have a look it looks like a bit of a mixed bag so some things have done well and some things haven't Let's have a look in the top 100, what's really pumped in the last 24 hours? What's done really well? I had a sneak peek at this before and I couldn't be more happier. Polygon, boom, there it goes. It is still going. Broke that $2 barrier. That is unbelievable. I have literally 100X'd my Polygon. I bought it on average. I got some under two cents at about sort of... Uh, one point sort of eight cents i uh, got some at about 2.2 .2 cents and i got some at about 2.89 cents so you know my average sort of buy price uh, well i suppose i'm still a little bit under uh, a 100x i've definitely got a 100x on the cheapest uh polygon slash matic i bought the other two were still a little bit off but i have no doubts that they're going to do that that is unbelievable and we're going to have a look at a story that's showing the adoption and why we've seen such a big rise uh, in Polygon. Now, in all fairness, I would be very careful buying into a pump, and this has been a mad pump, you know, well and truly doubled its, you know, price in the last week. We could see a fairly, no, I won't say significant, but I think we're going to see a pullback sometime soon, in all fairness. But, look, again, I could be wrong, and this could continue to go to 3 $4 before we see any major pullbacks, although I think that is you know, maybe pushing it a little bit. But look, Polygon, it's still number 16, so it's not even in the top 10 yet. Synthetics Network starting to make a comeback. Aave, uh, XSushi, Sushi. Look, there's a number of DeFi coins that are making a bit of a, you know, a comeback here. I think they're building up for DeFi Summer. I think DeFi Summer is not far away, and it is going to blow people's minds. This is going to be hectic. It's going to be fully hectic. And again, I, I think DeFi is 100%, you know, the future of finance. Now, whether it's Synthetics Network Token or Aave or Yearn Finance or Maker, oh, look, you know, that literally is a million dollar question. Where should I put a million dollars if I had a million dollars? You know, which one of these coins or which, you know, out of these four or five DeFi coins should I split it amongst? Me, love Synthetics Network. Polygon's got a lot of... Uh, DeFi stuff on it, so really you could call this sort of part DeFi at the moment. Aave, love Aave. Um, there's yeah a number of decoins, particularly Aave uh, and Synthetics Network. I'm really big fans of those, and I think they are uh, true disruptors and are really going to yeah change the way things go. I mean Aave, boom, six hundred dollars. Uh, I think the most expensive Aave I bought was about five hundred and eighty dollars. Uh, and it saw a fairly good correction from then, but now it's back up there in total profit. Synthetics Network, I've bought some Synthetics Network at $24, so I'm still down uh, on some Synthetics Network, but again, I think when DeFi summer comes, 
yeah, hold your horses. And again, the, I'm thinking long term holds for a lot of these. Don't get me wrong, I'll probably sell you know about fifty percent of them when I think we're sort of close to the market top. But I won't be selling all of them. And again, really, Harve, I'm kicking myself. I I wish I had have bought more. I could have, but I didn't. Uh, that has performed extremely well. But look, so synthetic networks taken. I was lucky enough to get some of that at eighty six cents. 86 cents and now it's 21 dollars so yeah i'm pretty happy with that all right anyway moving on let's have a look at bitcoin in the chart and you know people again they're still really worried at the moment bitcoin is still in this ranging motion i consider this to be a great buying opportunity inside this uh green thing here and again look do i think it can come down and sort of wick down here around 39 38 thousand yeah, I do think that can absolutely happen, but I think it's going to bounce super hard. I mean, there's already some, you know, significant kind of buying going on here. And again, we'll have a look at some stories in that. But it's the old hands. It's not these young, you know, the new money, that's what we'll call it. It's not the new money. They've panic sold, uh, unfortunately. And then, then they're going to, you know, kick themselves when it starts to go back up. So if, I think this is a buying opportunity. You know, at the moment, I'm not buying Bitcoin uh, as such, but... You know, I might throw a few dollars at Bitcoin. I've already made some really good gains from sort of there. I just think there's some other altcoins that are going to do much better. And once I start to sell those off, then I will change some of that into Bitcoin because I just think they are the better plays in the short term, not necessarily the long term. But again, I do think Bitcoin could probably rise up. We get a bit of a fake out and then it comes back down and somewhere over around about here. So again, towards the end of the month, I think Bitcoin will probably meet up with this 200-day uh, moving average and bounce off it, and then that's when, when we get the next big move up. But look, we've been consolidating, you could almost say since here. So really since January, we were at around about the prices we are. We had a sell-off, we had a correction, and then we just continued to range. So really we've been between, you know, sort of 64,000 and roughly, uh, what's that, 41,000, since the start of the year it's the fifth so for five months you could say bitcoin has been kind of ranging yeah there's been some big volatility to the downside and even to the upside but generally the average price is sitting about right where it is right now i really think this is getting ready to coil up and it's going to spring hard now again when it springs hard it's going to suck a fair bit of money out of the altcoins at first when it does make its move but it will still drag the altcoins up. They'll lose a little bit at first, and then they'll slowly just get uh, start to get dragged up as people start to take profits from Bitcoin and put them into the altcoins. Particularly when Bitcoin starts uh, stops and you know hits its next peak, whatever that may be. I actually think this next spring that we get, Bitcoin is going to go pretty much all the way up to one hundred thousand. Now, not in one straight line, but I don't think it's gonna to get to kinda of eighty thousand and then sort of struggle around there for weeks or months on end. I think it probably gets to around about eighty thousand. I think it has a correction, comes back down and then starts to push up and it's I think the one hundred thousand is where we're really gonna see uh, some real trouble getting through. But look at the moment, we saw it at 60,000. That's just my personal opinion. Time's going to be the best you know, teller of whether I'm right or wrong, and we'll see. But again, for me, I like Bitcoin at this price, and I might throw a few dollars at it, but I really already have my Bitcoin position. It's the altcoins that I'm really looking at at the moment. But they are highly speculative and, you know, <laughs> yeah, pretty dangerous. So, you know, if you're new to this whole space, really Bitcoin's your best bet. And particularly if you have a more long-term perspective. If you're thinking, I'm going to hold Bitcoin for 5 to 10 years, my personal opinion, not financial advice, is you're going to be just fine. But in the altcoin space, oh, you know, you can't guarantee that. Not even, you know, again, Ethereum's not finished, Cardano's not finished, Polkadot's not finished, you name it. They're all promises and hopes. Bitcoin is a finished product outside of scalability at the moment. All right, let's have a look at some of these uh, stories. So here it is, Bitcoin suffers biggest drop or biggest pullback uh, this year and it drops to a 3.5 month low near 42,000. So again, we already went back in that and had a look at it. It's not that bad. I mean, look at the dips that we've had you know, at, at other times. This dip really isn't all that bad uh, and it's only 30 something percent. 
in 2017's bull run, they had about five or six dips that were 40 to nearly 50%, and those markets survived and kept going. That was before institutions and main, you know, kind of, you know, worldwide adoption. Not that we have full worldwide adoption yet, but that is coming. I'm super bullish on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general for the next decade, at least, the next 10 years. But that's not to say we won't have any, you know, again, 40, 50, maybe even 60% corrections in some coins. In some shit coins, you're going to have even bigger ones. But I think things like Ethereum, Bitcoin, uh, you know, possibly Cardano and, you know, some of those really good coins, I don't think you'll see much more than a 50, 60% dip in them, period, even in a bear market. But some of those other altcoins, I think you're definitely still going to see 90% corrections in them. Again, my personal opinion, and that's all it is. All right, analysts suggest uh, Bitcoin uh, strong hands are buying the dip, and that's ex I think that's true as well. It's the the new money that's panicking. You know, they bought in at whatever prices they bought in, and they just cannot handle something that goes down at all. They just start to panic, and they're like, "I've been in this for a week, and it's going down." And so they'll panic sell at a loss, and then they'll want to jump back in when all of a sudden it's more expensive than when they bought in the first time, and they sold for a loss. Smart money is buying, and look, like I said, I'm I'm buying at the at the moment in the market, just not in Bitcoin. I see better returns in some of the altcoins, and I will turn some of those profits into bitcoin later though so really i guess you know while i'm not buying bitcoin i'm still eyeing bitcoin as kind of part of my final destination so again my personal opinion is i think it's a good buy at the moment all right coinbase they want to raise another 1.25 billion dollars after its direct listing so they already made a ton of money and it didn't say whether it wants to buy bitcoin but the possibility is still there so again is that what they're going to do are they going to try and you know copy and uh you know copy and paste what MicroStrategy did i think there's a definite possibility that they put some of that money into bitcoin excuse me whether it's just bitcoin and they you know put money into other things expansion who knows very very interesting i mean they made a ton of money from that uh, uh, initial exchange offering. Now, speaking of, Coinbase has fallen to below $250. Now, that's as the stock sells off as Bitcoin dips. That's what I mean. I think the next bear market will be uh, probably an interesting time. Whether it gets below $250 uh, or not, I don't know. Because as soon as Bitcoin starts to rise and cryptocurrency starts to pump again, the stocks will go up. So Coinbase, Mara, Riot, and other blockchain-related stocks continue to slide as Bitcoin struggles to hold above 43000 And look, that is always the way it is going to be with those kind of stocks. Their price will fluctuate, uh, and quite heavily, along with cryptocurrencies. But, you know, Bitcoin, it's getting less and less volatile, so eventually it will kind of stabilize. It's just when will that happen? Five years, ten years, two months, six weeks... Who knows? I think probably more around the kind of five to ten year mark would be my, you know, best guess of when it, you know, sort of doesn't have the massive ups and downs. But look, the massive ups and downs, ups and downs it's having now are nothing in comparison to what it did back in the early days. All right, bullish for Bitcoin. So here's why Bitcoin could get ready to do another big run. So a new rule that under the COVID-19, sorry, a new rule under the hat of the COVID-19 relief bill will see 39 million US households receive up to $3,600 monthly starting from mid-July. So that's in only about you know a month and a half sort of. And all of a sudden, there's more money. We already know that, you know, at least a reasonable amount of these stimulus packages have gone directly into things like cryptocurrencies not just crypto they've gone into the stock market and things like that as well but a lot of people are starting to ride that wave and should you know mid-july come and crypto be in its next move up i think that's when you're going to see even more money pile in and everyone's going to be throwing money at it so really now again when it's red you know you want to buy when everyone's fearful and you want to sell when everyone's greedy that's the way to make money in the stock market period but it can be hard to do that at times and really just simply investing and holding is the easiest way and quite often will give you better gains than those who you know can time the market. There's only a select few that can really get in at the right time and get out at the right time and make super big money. Investors generally 
you know, kill uh, most traders, but not all. All right. Ethereum network revenue set to smash monthly record of $722 million. So Ethereum is still growing. You know, don't worry about this market pullback and all the rest of it. That's always going to happen in markets that get a little bit overheated. And that's all that happened. It got a little bit overheated. There was too much enthusiasm. But we are not at the top. I don't think we're anywhere near the top. I think, you know, the market can at least double, if not triple, where it is right now personal opinion all right so q2 is also on track to beat q1 in transaction revenue before the end of may so again the ethereum you know price uh gas fees have been absolutely horrendous at times uh people are still using it and that means generally uh really big whales and you know companies and things like that but even the small person is still using it a little bit all right this i found very interesting Polygon active users grew by 75,000 as DeFi boom continues. And again, DeFi has been a little bit quiet for a while now, you know, a couple of gains here and there, but nothing crazy. I think Polygon is play, going to play a big part in DeFi summer and it's going to, yeah, it's going to be crazy. I really do think it's going to remind me of those latter parts of 2017 where coins, you know, 5x 6x in just a matter of sort of weeks and over a month or two and i think the DeFi are really going to be the ones that can do that now will they exactly 5 and 6x i don't know they did that back in 2017 coins anyway but that was a smaller market cap it was easier to make that happen can we see that same kind of growth this time look i think we can but you know you just can't guarantee it's hard to know how you know What's the appetite like for the investing world at that time? If it's really kind of going gangbusters, it's unfortunate, but that draws even more people to it and usually pushes it even higher until it gets to that point where there just is no one left to invest anymore. And that's when people start to sell off. And that's when you get your panic sellers as well. So anyway, moving on. Data from DAP Radar shows rapid uptake of Polygon-based decentralized applications. The network now has 93 functioning dApps, and and which is up considerably over just the past four weeks. But get a load of this. It has attracted 75,000 new users over just the past seven days. So that's where these came from. In the last week, 75,000 more people got onto Polygon. And that's why the price pushed up to you know $2.12, I think it's at at the moment. So amazing. All right, Polkadot announces Kasama is finally ready to host parachains. So again, Kasama will be first with the parachains and then Polkadot will follow and Polkadot will be a lot harder to get the parachains on. Kasama is fairly easy and they'll have a lot more. Uh, it's going to take, uh, you know, really good projects will get the uh, parachains on the actual Polkadot mainnet. But it's good to see Kasama uh, is finally getting there. Again, you know, Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot, Adam, you name it, all these, you know, Elrond and all of that, they're not finished products. They're still in the process of building. There's all these things that are still yet to come before you can consider them sort of finished projects. They should always still be, you know, reevaluating and updating, but that's what you're investing in. And that's why the gains are so crazy because people are speculating on what they're going to be like when they finished but also why they're so risky because they're not a finished product and anything could happen at any time and all of a sudden these projects you know, can't deliver on what they said they were or there's bugs or something that comes in. But I really like Polkadot. I've got myself a position in Polkadot uh, and I want to continue to build a bigger position in Polkadot as well. All right, last story. Institutions dump BTC as volume source for Ether funds. So I definitely think some institutions have been selling uh, some of their Bitcoin, but it'll be the ones that got in a while ago and have already made some really good profit. And they're looking for a way to make even more profit and, you know, kind of really good profit. What comes after Bitcoin? Ethereum. And that's the way it starts. And we've spoke about this before. People come in, they invest in Bitcoin. Then they invest in Ethereum. And then after that, it's just they start to make their way through the list and they find what they think's good what they think is bad and yeah go from there uh, again I'm super bullish on this space I really do think this is just you know I, and it's hard to say for people who are new it's going to be hard for them to hear this this is a good correction 
literally a good correction. It's going to shake out the, you know, the the new money, the silly money that were never really in it, uh, you know, because they believed in it. They're just trying to quickly flip it and make some money. And what people don't understand is, you know, they hear these stories about people in cryptocurrencies, you know, turn a couple of thousand into a hundred thousand or a million dollars. Yeah, it probably took them a year or two for that to happen. It did not happen in a matter of weeks. And it probably didn't even happen in like a matter of just a couple of months. Again, for me, Polygon, I was lucky enough to get some at two cents of 100x uh, my money that I put into Polygon. It's taken me over a year. I bought that stuff like literally probably May last year, April last year, somewhere about there. So it took me a year to get that 100x. It wasn't easy. I watched Polygon do nothing and even lose money for me originally when I got in. I could have bought it cheaper than the uh, 1.8 sort of cents that I bought it for. But, you know, that's the way it is. And that's the reality of investing full stop. You're going to lose most of your money if you think you can just kind of jump in and jump out and flip things randomly. There are a couple of very, very either lucky or you know, it's probably intelligence as well, but let's say a lot of luck is in there. People that can do that, they just, they can read the markets well, they get in, they get out, they make a fortune. Most people who do that, and I would say probably 95 to 97% of people, they just get burnt and then they, you know, end up where most people are and that is just becoming smart investors. Anyone can invest and it doesn't make you smart because you invest, but becoming a smart investor and being able to buy when it's red Buy in days like this when it's down and sell in days like this when it's green. But again, there's more to it than just that. You know, being able to read cycles, things that are happening around the world that may affect markets all over the place. There's a whole lot of things that go into it. It's not as easy as just go right out. Well, I bought in the red and uh, I sold in the green, so I've made some money. Don't get me wrong, that can work but you're probably not going to see the real exponential gains if that's the way you operate. All right, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time. It is getting late here in, here in Australia, and I've got to get ready for work again tomorrow up super early. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. If you're on that gain train at the moment, then you've outperformed the market, and well done to you, and I'll see you next time.